Welcome back to another edition of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning with, and today our with is Dr. Sarah Mohammed. It's uh, good to have you here, Sarah. Can we get started by, uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. So I am off to describe myself as a recovering academic. I am a qualitative education researcher by training. Um, my undergraduate degree is in cognitive science and my PhD is in educational psychology, which makes me, I think, one of the first true learning scientists around. Um, and I really, the, the main goal that I hope to achieve with my work is to make research meaningful and applicable in the lives of real life learners. Um, so to take it out of the ivory tower and get it into real classrooms as much as possible. Speaking of that, I know you spend a lot of time in classrooms with teachers that are engaged in both blended learning as well as online learning. And we've got a lot of teachers now that some of which have been doing this for a couple of weeks, some of which are just starting out uh, on this journey. And for these folks, all of them are coming to it new with little experience with it or background in it. Do you have any advice that you'd give to them? Yeah, so the good news is um, from decades of research, we know that there is not much that is different in an online environment than in a face-to-face -face environment. So typically and generally, the things that we know to work well in an in-person learning environment continue to work well in an online learning environment. Um, and so some of those things that I really want to use this opportunity to reinforce is um, learning is a social and an interactive process. And so as much as you can make sure that the, uh, the instruction that you're trying to provide now in an online environment, even if you've never done this before, as much as you can focus on making sure that it is, continues to be interactive um, and as social as it can be, um, th that's the best that you're doing for your students. Um, in, a, in a very ironic way, so one of the things we've really lost in this current situation is the in-person social aspect of a classroom, right? And so I feel like technology, ironically enough, can be that bridge in a time when we're told we must physically distance from each other. We actually don't have to socially distance from each other in 2020 because we still do have technology. And so bearing in mind that we want to, to use the technology to sort of um, make up for what we're missing, you know, to bridge the gap between what we used to have and, and what we can do right now. Um, I, I still think focusing on socializing, building community, um, and making the learning continue to be as interactive as possible really is the best use of technology right now. And worry less about the pedagogy of academics at this point is the advice that I would give everyone, teachers and parents who are now finding themselves having to be teachers. You mentioned parents, and I know you've got a little one running around there yourself now. Um, I don't know if uh, he or she is school-aged yet, but um, you've got a lot of parents now that while they've always been partners in, in this process, are obviously having to take a much larger role in the, the educational setting now since the setting is their home. Um, based on your experiences, are there any advice or guidance that you'd give to them? Yeah, um, I think what's most overwhelming right now is that we're being asked to focus on all of the things. So whether we are a parent who is being asked to be a teacher or a teacher who is being asked to concurrently full-time parent our own children while we are being teachers, um, I think the, the worst part of this time is the feeling that we, we must be everything all at once. Um, and so the advice that I would give is focus on one thing, pick one thing. It's okay. It's a global pandemic. Um, and, and we cannot be, none of us can be, even those of us who are actually teachers and parents, um, none of us can be both of those things at the same time to all the children that we are responsible for. So, um, the Learning Accelerator actually has started putting out a series. Um, it's a weekly series and it's called Today's One Thing. Um, so it very much echoes that advice that I just gave. Um, but coincidentally, I, I was not involved in producing the series. The, the first thing that they suggest that people focus on is the thing that I talked about previously, which is building connection. Um, so if, if the only thing you have time for as a teacher or a parent or both, right now is um, building connections and technology can help you do that. Focus on that, let everything else go. 
um, it'll be okay and the kids will be all right. All right, perfect. And we'll make sure to put a link in the area below to um, both Sarah's information like we do for everyone, as well as that one thing um, series that the Learning Accelerator is working on. So uh, thank you very much, Sarah. This has been another edition of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning with, and today our with is Dr. Sarah Mohammed.